Hello, welcome back to Retirement Clarity Radio. My name is Scott Newhouse. I am your host. Shout out to you and the dozens and dozens of listeners all across the U.S. who are eagerly anticipating this episode of Retirement Clarity Radio. So we are continuing our conversation on retirement income. How do we get this retirement paycheck? You know, we're done with our, you know, two to three to four decades of, of earned income. And how do we transition into generating a retirement paycheck that is going to last us for life. We've discussed a lot of different ways you can get your income in retirement. Um, we've talked about reverse mortgages, rental real estate. We're going to talk about annuities soon. And then last week, we talked about something called the 4% rule, which kind of governs how you can distribute money from your traditional stock and bond portfolio. Today, I want to I want to cover additional strategies that can give you some guidance on how much money you can take from your investment portfolio. So as I just said, last week, we talked about a really popular strategy, probably the most popular um, retirement distribution strategy called the 4% rule. Now that is a form of a static distribution distribution strategy. Um, This week we are going to cover three strategies that are grouped as dynamic distribution strategies and how you can use them to generate an income in retirement. So we're going to discuss, we are also going to discuss how that's different, um, how these dynamic distribution strategies are different from a static distribution strategy strategy like the 4% rule. So with that said, let's just jump right into it. So what are dynamic distributions? Dynamic distributions are a retirement income strategy that is going to adjust um, how much money you spend and withdraw depending on a number of factors. And so those factors uh, can include, um, well, it depends on which strategy you choose, but it can include your total investable assets, the recent returns on your portfolio, and the inflation rate. Um, so dynamic distributions are designed to make your portfolio Uh, retirement portfolio last while also adjusting to these external factors in your life that change on a regular basis. And so the way it works compared to static compared to static distributions is that dynamic distributions allow you flexibility when it comes to withdrawing money for your retirement. So again, last week we talked about the 4% rule, which again is a static distribution um, strategy, which simply means um, it assumes that you will be spending at the same level throughout your retirement adjusted for inflation. And so you know, last week we talked about how you set that initial withdrawal rate at 4% of your total um, accounts value. Um, And you take out that 4% and then each and every year you simply adjust for inflation. So if you had that million dollar portfolio and you start out with a 4% distribution rate, um, you would take out $40,000 in that first year. And then for the second year, you would just adjust for whatever inflation was in in that year. Uh, So let's say 2% and then you give yourself that 2% boost off that $40,000. And then you just do that every every subsequent year, regardless of what uh, the stock market has done, regardless of what your total portfolio balance is. And so that's what I mean by static. It just stays the same throughout your entire retirement. Um, so I hope that makes sense because that's a really important point to understanding why we might want to consider a dynamic distribution strategy. So as we've discussed on this podcast before, when we talked about the retirement smile, uh, though, your expenses aren't in retirement are simply not going to work on that static distribution line. It's simply not a reality um, for you to spend the same amount of money each and every year. Life simply doesn't work that way. And and you can think back uh, to your working years. Uh, maybe, you know, that year when you had your first child or a second child or when you had three kids, um, did you spend more or less than you did in other years? Well, maybe you spent more because you had so much stuff that you had to buy um, on maybe a one-time basis. But then the, you know, the subsequent year, well, since you already bought that stuff in the previous year, you didn't need to buy nearly as much. So your expenses, um, if it's anything like mine have gone up and down in certain years depending on your circumstances and what I'm saying is that I think the same thing is going to happen for you in your retirement and so that's why I'm cautious of using um, those static distribution rates because I don't think your retirement expenses are going to be static I don't think they're going to be the same adjusted for inflation for 30 plus years in addition to that static distribution strategies like the 4% rule 
don't account for those one-time withdrawals from your retirement account uh, when you need to take out some kind of lump sum uh, for something that comes up. And I frankly think that's inevitable that at some point in your retirement, you are going to need to take a lump sum from your accounts. So for those reasons, a dynamic distribution strategy in your retirement um, is going to change as your life changes, which I think makes a lot more sense than assuming that your expenses will continually be the same over the entirety of your life. So that's my case on why I think a dynamic distribution strategy is a better one um, in most cases, not in every case, but in most cases than the static distribution strategy. So now I want to transition into three different types of popular uh, dynamic distribution strategies. And there are more strategies than just these three, but I don't want this podcast to go on forever. And I want you guys to just understand the main points of what I'm talking about here, understand some, some strategies that you can consider, and then if you want to do more research, please go ahead and do that. So the first dynamic distribution strategy that I have is withdrawing a fixed percentage each year. And yes, this, uh, well, let me, let me get into this and I'll explain how it's different than the 4% rule. But this is one of the simplest ways to use dynamic distributions. You simply withdraw a fixed percentage of your portfolio per year each year. Now, this is different than the 4% rule because again, the 4% rule assumes that you take out 4% in your first year of retirement and then adjust it for inflation each and every uh, subsequent year. This strategy is different in that in that you take out a fixed percentage of your account value every single year. So if you take out 4% the first year, then you take out 4% of your account balance in the second year, and then you take out 4% of your account balance in the third year. So it's not adjusted for inflation. It just looks at your account value um, at the beginning of that new year, and then you just withdraw that that 4% um, each and every year. So this strategy does have some merit. Um, the first thing to note is that you will never run out of money if you take out this fixed percentage each year. Why? It's it's mathematically not possible because let's say you're only taking out 4% per year. If you follow that and if you follow that to the letter, there's simply no way to run out of money because you're only taking out 4% per year. Um, the second thing to note on this is that if your portfolio increases from say let's have you say you have a fantastic year and it goes from 1 million to 1.5 million or it could take you know over the course of a couple of years it gets to that value you will be able to increase your income um, because you know 4% of 1 million is $40,000 and then let's say your portfolio grows to that 1.5 million dollar number then your new distribution will be $60,000 um, the 4% of you know 1.5 million is $60,000 so that's a significant increase in your income and you were rewarded with that higher income because your portfolio account grew so much. Now, on the other hand, um, and this is a downside, if your portfolio drops, then your income is going to have to drop as well. So if you start out with that uh, $1 million uh, account and it drops down to 700000 which has happened before in the market, and boy, it will happen again. have no idea when, but it will happen again. We're going to have a 30% correction at some point. Um, then your $40,000 of income drops to $28,000 per year if you're following that fixed percentage um, each year at that 4% range. So with a fixed percentage each year, you can withdraw more when the market is up and withdraw less when the market is down. This allows you some flexibility in terms of your income when your portfolio is doing well and it also protects your portfolio and your retirement from disaster when you have poor market performance. And the reason why it does that is because you intentionally lower your income when your portfolio is doing poorly, which is very, very important in ensuring the longevity of your portfolio and making sure that your money is going to last as long as you do. So that is the withdrawing a fixed percentage of your portfolio each year year and that's our first dynamic distribution strategy our second one is something called the vanguard spending rule um, and, and here's essentially how it works so you select an initial withdrawal rate anywhere between 3.5 and 5.5 percent depending on your portfolio allocation as well as your risk tolerance so you set that initial withdrawal rate um, and then you spend that money in your first year of retirement 
At the end of your first year, you're going to look back and see how your portfolio has performed and you set a floor as well as a ceiling in terms of how much you're going to spend in the next year. So the floor, i.e. the decrease in the spending that you're going to set is 1.5%. So the most uh, that you will spend less uh, from year to year is 1.5%. So that's the highest drop in income that you could have. Now your ceiling is going to be how much you're going to be able to increase your income. And this is the maximum amount you can increase your income from a year to year basis. And uh, Vanguard says, let's set that at 5%. So the most you're going to increase your income from year to year is 5%. And so your spending for your second year of retirement is going to be dependent on the rate of return of your portfolio. And if it falls within um, that floor and ceiling, so negative 1.5% up to 5%, or if it falls outside of that. Now, if it if your return of your portfolio falls within that range, again, uh, negative 1.5% all the way up to a positive 5%, then you set your new distributions for year two of retirement at whatever your initial withdrawal rate you originally selected. So let's say you selected 5% um, in that first year of retirement and your portfolio was up uh, 3%, so it's, uh, it falls within that range of negative 1.5 all the way up to 5%, so we got that 3% return. Then you just get to set your new uh, withdrawal rate, uh, or you get to keep your withdrawal rate at 5% in the second year of your retirement. However, if your return was greater than your ceiling, so let's say your return was greater than that 5%, then you only get to increase your spending by the amount of the ceiling, 5%. Um, and so if your return was 7%, but uh, you set your ceiling at 5%, then you only increase your spending by 5% in that subsequent year. And then if it was lower than your floor, if your return was lower than your floor, then you reduce your spending only by the amount of the floor, 1.5%. So let's see how um, this would work in an actual example because I know that was a lot that I just went through. Let's say you have um, you know a portfolio and you set a 5% um, distribution withdrawal rate and your portfolio is a million dollars so that works out to fifty thousand dollars of income at a five percent distribution rate um, during the year your portfolio returns fifteen percent so really good year your portfolio is at fifteen percent however you are only going to increase your income by five percent because that's the ceiling that we set so your income goes from fifty thousand all the way up to fifty two thousand five hundred dollars um, and do, so do you see how that works even though you're up fifteen percent you only get that five percent increase and income. On the other hand, let's say you started out with a million dollars, but your portfolio had a negative 10% rate of return. Um, you would not need to lower your income by 10%. You only lower it by 1.5%. So your income, and, and we, we set at 1.5% because that is the floor that we're going to lower our spending on a year to year basis. So your port, uh, excuse me, your income of $50,000 only drops to $49,250. And then you simply repeat this process each and every year. Um, th there is a lot to the strategy. It's a little more difficult to maintain in my mind, um, but it does account for changes in your portfolio every single year, which is a really important component of your retirement income. In addition, you're only going to have those modest changes in your retirement spending on a year to year basis, because if you set it between Five positive five percent and negative one point five percent. That's not a huge increase and in decrease in your income, as opposed to that fixed uh, percentage withdrawal that we discussed previously, where um, we had an example where you're spending one from forty thousand dollars to twenty eight thousand dollars. That's a big jump. In this um, strategy, you're only going to have modest increases or decreases in your retirement spending from year to year. So that is one positive of this strategy. Now, according to Vanguard, if you incorporate this dynamic spending model with a 1.5% floor and a 5% ceiling in terms of expense changes, uh, then retirees could withdraw 5% per year and have an 85% level of confidence that the portfolio would last through 35 years. That's fantastic. Um, having that high level of confidence at that high of a withdrawal rate uh, lasting for 35 years, that's great news. So it's a, it, the strategy works. It's been tested by, um, you know, really smart people at Vanguard. So it's a really good strategy. Now, 
Let's move on to our third one, and I know we're going through a lot. We're going a little bit longer than I normally like, but this is an important um, podcast uh, for us to talk about this. The third dynamic distribution strategy is the Guyton Klinger Spending Decision Rules, aka Financial Guardrails, aka Guyton's Guardrails. Um, if you want to learn more about that, type in any of those three terms, and and you'll get um, the study that that. Uh, created this kind of rule. So these are spending decisions rules that were created by uh, Jonathan uh, Guyton and William Klinger. And these distribution rules are are based on the following. Um, First, we need to set an initial withdrawal uh, percentage. And that initial withdrawal is typically set uh, anywhere between four to six percent of the account balance depending on the risk tolerance of the investor and some other factors i personally think six percent is a little high but i'm really conservative when it comes to this stuff um, the original withdrawal rate that was used in uh, the guyton study was 5.6 percent and so let's say we stay at that 5.6 percent what you are trying to do in your overall strategy is set um, two different types of financial guardrails, and so just you know picture this in your mind. You have a guardrail at the very top, and then you have a very uh, you have a guardrail at the very bottom. Um, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure your overall spending and your distributions fall within um, your top guardrail and your lower guardrail. And so this is kind of how it works. The first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we preserve your capital. So this is the capital preservation rule, and this would be the lower um, guardrail. And what you need to do here is you need to reduce your annual spending by 10% if your current withdrawals exceed 20% of your initial withdrawal rate. Um, And so let me put this into English, and then we'll get to an example uh, down below. So let's say your portfolio goes down by over 20%. Then what you need to do to stay within these guardrails is you need to reduce your annual spending by 10% percent so that you are not distributing too much money when your portfolio is down significantly okay and I, I know this is really kind of hard to explain um, over audio but again if your portfolio falls by 20 percent essentially what you need to do is you need to take an income decrease uh, by 10 percent so that you make sure you do not spend too much of your portfolio while it's down then the next rule that they have is something called the prosperity rule and in this rule is just the opposite of what of the capital preservation rule so what you do here is you increase your annual spending by 10 percent if your current withdrawal rate falls below 20 percent of the initial withdrawal rate um, and so again in english if your portfolio goes up by over 20 percent then we are going to increase your spending by 10 percent to reward yourself for good performance and to ensure that you don't leave too much money left behind and you get to use the money that you've worked so hard for so if any of that was confusing i apologize let's just go straight to an example so that um, it's it's much more clear um, especially in terms of these guardrails so let's let's say you start out um, you've got your portfolio and you start out with a five percent withdrawal rate what we're going to do is we're going to set our guardrails up between four percent of your portfolio um, and six percent of your portfolio and so what we're going to do here is we're going to track your withdrawals so that your withdrawal rate is always between those percentages so if your withdrawals start at five percent and your portfolio falls if the balance falls to the point where your distributions exceed six percent of your portfolio then we would need to cut your income by 10 percent to get you back in to that four to six percentage point range and we would need to do that because your withdrawals are outpacing your investment growth Uh, so and then on the other hand if your portfolio grows so much that your initial five percent withdrawal rate is now less than four percent so you're really not even taking out that much then what we would want to do is we would want to give you a ten percent increase in income so that you are back in that four percent range in enjoying the fruits of your labor and the savings that you've accumulated over time so again um, i know this is really uh, could be confusing we've got an initial withdrawal rate of five percent and then we want to make sure that you're not distributing less than four percent and you're not distributing more than six percent and if at any point in your retirement you distribute uh below that four percent or above six percent then we are going to either do an increase or decrease in your spending to get you back within this four to six percent range but again that's the main point to stay within that four to six percent distribution range over the course of your retirement there's a couple 
couple more rules. I'm not going to get into every single thing. You can read the study if you want. Uh, but one rule is that um, if your portfolio goes up over, over the course of a year, then you get an increase for inflation. But if your portfolio goes down over the course of that year, but it stays within the guardrails, you typically don't get an increase in your income the next year year. Again, that's so long as it's within the guardrails. Um, so if your portfolio goes up, but it's still within four to six percent of your distribution rate, then we give you uh, an inflation increase. And if it goes down, but it's still within four to six percent, then we typically are not going to give you that inflation increase. Uh, and so according to the study done by uh, Garten and uh, Guyton, excuse me, and Klinger, by following these sets of rules, you can have an annual withdrawal rate as high as 5.6 percent um, and then you do that 20 percent above that and 20 percent below that as the guardrails um, and then you would have a more than 99 percent chance of preserving your portfolio again depending on your portfolio allocation and your risk tolerance Whew, we have covered a lot um, i want to wrap up by talking about why you might want to consider a dynamic distribution strategy for your retirement especially that traditional stock and bond portfolio i've got four main reasons that i want to go to here and then we'll get out um, and, and wrap up this episode but the first reason i think you should consider a dynamic distribution strategy is is, is that it is going to allow you to raise your spending when your portfolio is doing well so in times of bull markets when the markets are doing really well you're going to be able to comfortably raise your spending and this is going to allow you the opportunity to upgrade your lifestyle without worrying about overspending during your retirement because you're basing it off of other external conditions like um, your your rates of return and your portfolio balance and so you can comfortably spend a little bit more in terms of your income the second reason you should consider a dynamic distribution is that it is going to, it is going to allow you to protect your portfolio when your portfolio is not doing well so during bad market times in a dynamic distribution strategy you're going to lower your spending without worrying about completely destroying your portfolio because you will be selling less shares during a bad market time which is so important and in addition to that it's going to give you peace of mind during your retirement the third thing that uh, these types of strategies are going to allow for is is for you to better budget your retirement because you're going to have set set rules in place when it comes to, to your retirement distributions and that's going to help you be able to better budget and plan take out the guesswork and uncertainty of your retirement spending and most importantly it is going to protect the longevity of your retirement assets and making sure that these retirement paychecks last as long as you do and that is just so important and that also brings a lot of peace of mind to folks so we have covered so much in this episode as we wrap up i just think a dynamic distribution um, in terms of your retirement is going to give you more control over your retirement portfolio and it's going to adjust to real-time factors in your life as opposed to a simple static distribution amount um, that's set for the same annual expenses adjusted for inflation uh, for three to four decades which i don't think is realistic now before you choose any of these strategies and i must admit i am of course biased i'm a certified financial planner but i think it is so important for you to meet with a professional to discuss the pros and cons of all of these strategies and decide which one is best for you if you'd like to speak with me about your retirement income and, and generating a retirement paycheck i would love to chat with you you can schedule a time with me at start my retirement us again just go to start my retirement us and we can book a free no obligation time for us to chat thanks for tuning in for this whole episode really appreciate it and we will see you next time bye thanks again for listening as a reminder you should consult with a financial advisor familiar with the specific circumstances of your unique financial situation before making any financial decisions. Nothing in this podcast is a solicitation for the sale or purchase of any securities. Any mentions of rate of return are hypothetical in nature and not a guarantee of future returns. Scott Newhouse, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Forthright Finances, a California and Nevada registered investment advisor.